just noticed he seems like he's walking weird. That's not right. Who will save us? Who will save us? When the truth in the shadows Our hands will let you roll We're closed on Fridays and the weekends, but there's always somebody here taking care of the animals and Friday I had offered to come in and take care of the animals, so everything was going fine and um, we did have an emergency case come in and it just kind of delayed me leaving, but I was like, that's okay. So finally, it was like three o'clock in the afternoon and I finally was like, okay, I think everything's good. I can call it a day here at the organization. And as I was in my vehicle, just starting to back up, I looked up at Benjamin and I was like, he is walking just a little like weird, robotic maybe, I don't know. I was like, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna go check him. I'm sure he's fine, but I'm like something, something seemed a little weird. And I walked up to the pen and he actually came running down the hill to meet me, but it was still a little weird looking. And I'm like, buddy, what's wrong with you? And when he was walking, he was just really weird. And I was like, I'm taking him to the vet hospital and getting him uh, inside. He felt warm and um, once he was in here, I scanned his microchip and his fever was 109. And so I'm like trying to message Dr. Nancy and try to help Benjamin. And I'm just like, ah, it was crazy because he went from standing to on the floor pretty rapidly, just like, it was like his body was seizing up. I was trying to put a halter on him and he would just like bite down onto the, the, the rope or the halter. I like wouldn't let go. And I'm like, is this, I mean, I don't know what, what is going on. And I um, started hosing him down and he, his temperature slowly started dropping, which was a relief. And uh, Dr. Nancy was in communication with her on, on things to give him, to help him. I mean, I thought he was gonna die. Like, I'm like, whatever's happening to him is happening so rapidly. But with his temperature going down, um, I thought, you know, maybe he's good. And then he just kind of like zonked out for a while, sitting on my lap, um, with his head in my lap. And, and then finally, um, he, he did kind of sit up and I was like, okay, I think he's gonna make it. And Dr. Nancy was like messaging, like he has nine lives or something like that. And um, so it truly does. He, he, has, he has had so many touch and goes since we rescued him, I feel like. Well, two big ones, but yeah, so then, he seemed to be okay, he got up, um, and then I sat and watched him in his stall for an hour just to make sure before I left. Um, so yeah, Friday was long and intense and stressful, and then just sat and watched him for an hour eating and being his normal self, and he's been pretty normal since then. So don't really know exactly what's happened with him. I mean, it could be a number of things. We did find some mushrooms that sprouted up in the pasture, so maybe he ate one of them and had a wild little trip. I don't know, but it was not fun and it was very stressful and I'm very thankful that he's okay. But it was, it was scary. Sure is good to see you doing better, Benjamin. I'm scared to death. Today I have Emily helping and she's going to be helping Dr. Nancy and I with a procedure with Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin um, put me through a very scary experience. Thankfully, he's, he's doing better, but I thought he wasn't even gonna make it. But uh, now we're getting to um, kind of dive in medically on him, but getting the x-ray machine set up is one of the things we have to do. So um, Emily's learning about the x-ray machine. My name is Emily, and today is my first day at Horse Plus, and I'm extremely excited because I, I love working with horses, and it's my passion. I will be the veterinary assistant. I'll be helping Dr. Nancy with procedures and anything else that she needs me to do that is vet related. Benjamin, we put in the extra drains two weeks ago. They never drained anything, but there's still a little discharge coming from his wound. Um, 
Well, I did leave in the microchip at that point. I was like, okay, let's see what happens. So today what I'm gonna do is, we still can't eliminate, eliminate the microchip as being a nidus of where this lingering drainage is coming from. So I'm going to look for a pocket of drainage in there to help narrow down on top of combining it with the x-ray of where the microchip is. Today's goal is to go in, retrieve the microchip, and see if that eliminates or if there is something else that has started this whole cascade with Benjamin. Benjamin gave us a little scare on Friday, but he's back to his normal self now. So at this point, I'm like, just pull the microchip and be done and eliminate that as any question whatsoever. So that's where we're at. So we'll go from there and see where we end up at. Dr. Nancy says it was a little scare. Um, I'm like, he's dying. Like, it was rough. I am just so thankful that um, he's okay. And we'll let this sit about five minutes, let it take effect. You want us to take x-rays? Yeah, we'll x-ray and stuff in the meantime, because we're going to uh, prep again after this yeah. is set. So we got time to do x-rays, ultrasound, get us some starter points. Okay, so. <laughs> this is just lidocaine cream to help numb the skin. And I'll still do a lidocaine injection before I make an incision, but I'm just trying to baby Benjamin this morning. He's getting special baby loves. So that's from the hub is like right. The hub is right at the two, okay. And it's just, it's a little below. A little below, okay. So that's where we're gonna incise right there. So what we need to do is do another scrub over top of it. Uh, you can, again, touch the needle with the gauze and everything, but just scrub on top of it. And I will bleb it and then we will see what we get, darling. You're always an adventure, Benjamin. I know, big old lot of clean bleb, it hurts. I hate a lot of cane too, darling. Now we're good. I will say I'm just eyeballing it up here while I'm letting that lot of cane bleb take effect. If you try to die, you have to do have things like this done. Okay, I'm gonna hold this in while y'all take an x-ray. Yep, to figure out where we need to go from here, because I don't want to just go digging around. Yeah. Mm. That's an issue if it's in the center, because that's not an easy to get to location. Remove this. Yeah. Let's remove anything else, but yeah, that's an issue if it's that far in. That be a big root of our problem. Yep. That's oh, it didn't look good. <laughs> that's an issue. Mm-hmm. Okay, but it's not in, it's very deep in the muscle mm -hmm. because we know from the other picture that it's not in his, yeah. his neck bones. Yeah, so. so it's just very deep. It's very deep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a drain here mm -hmm. and we'll keep him on. I'm gonna infuse some penicillin and we will have to just let and see what nature is gonna do on that. So that's why, because it's so deep in, we can't easily go get it. Because we've got a little tunnel here. And when he was down, like right back in here, there's a pocket that I was squeezing and it was... It's coming up and out's what it's doing, yep. Yeah, it's, it's tunneled its way is what it is, so. Yeah, that's deep. But I mean, his neck was open so deep, I could totally see how it could just yeah. fall down there. It just kept there. falling down, yeah. It just went, because we pulled out that muscle above it but the key thing is we just got to get it to heal in so it's not an issue. But yeah, I don't think that was related to Friday's incident though. I am trying to infuse in some penicillin directly into our, our track. It's an old cow trick when you do a C-section and it's all contaminated. You just fill it full of penicillin and let it do a little local action as well. I really hope we can get to the bottom of poor little Benjamin's interesting life. Um, Friday was, was very scary. I'm just thankful I was here um, because I don't know what would have happened if I wasn't here. It, I, don't, I don't think he would be here right now. But uh, hopefully 
uh, with, with what Dr. Nancy's done this morning, it will help him. Um, we just got to get him better. This has been going on for months now. We, when we rescued him, he had a huge abscess that burst. Um, and we've just been trying to help him since then. And it has been a journey. But he's still fighting, so we're still fighting. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're training Troy today. Uh, he's going to be our new stable hand if everything works out. Uh, so we have fed everyone this morning, went around and done that, taking care of the cats and dogs. And right now we're over uh, cleaning all the dog stalls. our horse trailer that we purchased in 2010 and it has been an amazing trailer but we aren't using it as much now that we have other trailers and our board of directors decided to donate this trailer to one of the organizations uh, within the Full Circle Life Horse Shelter Network this year so we're getting it cleaned it's going to be going to a trailer um, uh, repair place and getting all fixed up so uh, we'll be giving it away to one of the organizations within the Full Circle Life Horse uh, Shelter Network. So not only are we giving uh, the grant to them, but now uh, we're doing a little extra with a horse trailer too. So I'm excited to see uh, it's, it's never had a cleaning like this. So um, hopefully it looks all brand new by the time they're done. Okay, so we just got done cleaning the horse trailer behind us. We're really excited for y'all to see it. And I'm Rhiannon and this is Rhonda. So we run R&R Horse Trailer Detailing. And if you would like your trailer cleaned as well in the Middle Tennessee area, you can reach us at cleantrailers at gmail.com. This is, this is the rig, at least today it is. As long as you have fire, it's off my I face. have a cottering iron and I've got a mat gas torch. Good, that's all we need. <laughs> that, your role is to keep hot metal. That, that. I am the man for hot metal. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna run the bathroom real quick and we'll get Victor and let you be trimming on him while I get Mary brought in and we should be good to go then. Cool. So we're back out here behind the, uh, behind the vet barn this morning and we've got Victor over here who's in dire need of a trim. So we're gonna get started on him, and uh, while we're doing that, uh, Dr. Nancy is gonna prep Mary uh, for her surgery, and we're going to uh, remove that damaged hoof bulb and that bit of hoof, and uh, see how that goes. <laughs> His feet are not too bad. They're long and they're, they're stretched out of shape. But with some regular maintenance, I think they'll probably relax back to around where they need to be. So not bad at all. Yeah, yeah, we'll be able to get that tendon to relax a little bit and get his, his toe shorter on the next run, but I think that's good for now. You're good, Victor. You ready to go back? Cool. So we just wrapped up Trim and Victor and uh, Dr. Nancy's been getting Mary ready for her surgery. So we're going to go ahead and start with that in just a few minutes. So you just want to be close and handy to your car. So for Mary today, where she has that sheared off piece of hoof that is still attached with blood flow, what we're going to attempt to do today is take wire and literally just go down through her and just cut it off nice and flush because it's not supporting weight. We gave it time to grow out. It doesn't do that. Uh, Elijah's gonna be here as backup for cautery in case it is a heavy bleeder. Right now, we're scared it may be, so we're gonna be prepared. And, uh, but literally, I'm just going in and cut it as flush as I can, and we'll see what we get. This is completely thinking outside the box. This is what you call gig wire? Giggly wire, yep. Giggly wire. You can buy it in the camping stores too. Okay, yeah, yeah. it's like a, yeah, it's just like a little pocket saw yeah. kind of deal. Yep. 
Now that's not going to cut all the blood flow off, but you ready, Elijah? I, I am ready. We want to car cauterize this as soon as you get it off. As soon right? as I get it off. All right, yeah. I'll start warming this thing up. Well, that's not much blood at all. No. Actually, I like that. I like that too. <laughs> I like that. Okay, now Let's can see. I start from the bottom and go up? Yeah, now? that might even be a better way to go. We'll see what we get from it there. Okay, Keith, let me swap with you. That's where the goodies will be. Okay. Getting my morning workout in. <laughs> Cardio day. Okay. Well. What do you think, Elijah? We still need that last little bit. Yeah. But we can take that off with nippers pretty quick. Take that off with nippers in. Because you got better control with them than I do with the wire angle. All right, here we go. It's going fair, fair. It's going fair. Yeah, this is actually better than I expected. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of shocked. Yeah, I'm actually impressed that that didn't bleed more than that. All right, this is going to smell like steak. That's okay. Like a, burn, like a burn snake. Okay. okay, so let's start releasing some pressure. Just a little bit, not bad though. Yeah, that, that's minor oozing. Yeah, just a little right there. And also I hold pressure till we get ready. All right, we're good. Yeah. Still on the well out. And we might not get 100% of it. Yeah, but we're going to put a wrap on it for tonight anyway, so. Yeah, that's because the tourniquets are completely off right now. Oh, yeah. I'll leave this with you. This is actually kind of a nifty little tool. It seems to be working well. Yeah. I like I'm, it. I'm not going to be using it on the regular. <laughs> He's like, don't call on the regular for this. I, I don't mind it. I just don't, I don't like to attempt this sort of thing by myself. Yeah, I'll just say that's not me because you see that I've put this off waiting on Dr. Lydia and with her elephants, it ain't happening. And I'm finally like, okay, if at least Elijah can help. Hey, this has gone really well though. Like, I'm not saying we're the dream team, but. But hey, it works. <laughs> we have managed to work some, make, make some things work. Yeah, absolutely. Hold on just a minute, Keith. Let me put a little wrap up here. You're fine. Okay. Leave that there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little padding up here just to be on the safe side. So we remove Mary's hunk of sheared off hoof with a little bit of tissue attached. It went really well. Elijah helped out, stepped in, helped get it off. It looks good. There was not nearly the amount of bleeding I was expecting. So fingers crossed now, and we're gonna see what she does. Yeah, I think, I think we gave her the best possible chance and everything went uh, better than we expected. So it's hard to beat that. Good day, very good day. For sure. Hey Jason, why are you working on the episode? Oh, uh -huh. Mr. Chickens is on vacation. That's John. And that means that I have to do everything he was gonna do if he was here, which includes finishing horse shelter heroes, finishing horse rescue heroes. Yeah, I don't even know what all he does while he's here. So yeah, I'm gonna have to do it. So that's okay. He's enjoying vacation. More power to him. I'm so glad that John and Kim really got to go on vacation because you've got to take that time for yourself when you're just grinding day in and day out. Which reminds me, when do you go on vacation? What are you doing? Oh, caught me. Um, we're gonna go get the uh, arena set back up with the agility course and all that good stuff. Um, it shouldn't take too long. I'm just gonna kind of tell them where I want everything and then I'm probably gonna go back to training some horses. Angela came in and tried to set this up 
And she came and told me, she's like, I was thinking about setting it up, but then uh, I stood the obstacle up and it didn't look right, so I'm just gonna let you do it. But Angela gets an A for effort. So we got the arena all set up. So the versatility course is ready to use again. Now this is great because we can use this to help desensitize some of these horses. So a lot of the horses that are just kind of afraid of everything, as long as we got them leading okay, we can start bringing them through here to kind of help get them used to things. Uh, I just had to run in town. I thought I had some parts, but I didn't. So I ran up, got some more parts. I'm gonna fix the water over here so I can get the water turned on to this side of the um, of the area for the barns and stuff. Uh, one of the fittings I had, uh, I used plastic last time. I'm gonna go with a little something a little heavier this time. Uh, kind of cracked and started leaking, so we're fixing where I'm working. It's in the in the mud. Yeah. Playing in the mud, you have to have the right equipment. And I don't always have it either. This is a, uh, it's called a pipe joint compound. It helps uh, seal the threads when you um, put this, the fittings on so that uh, it doesn't leak around the threads. I'm having the manager turn the water on and we're gonna see if it leaks now. And that is the frost-free unit uh, draining all the water from the spigot down it's good thank you and now before i bury this i'm going to go get a steel post and put a steel post in behind it uh, and zip tie it on there so it stays solid we got the leak fixed you got the water turned back on just got everything buried back up uh, so I'm going to kind of go clean up my tools, clean myself up, and go on to the next project. So right now I'm getting ready to clean the bunkhouse for our upcoming boot camp in September. Getting all the sheets and the blankets cleaned up and washed. Going to get the windows clean, swept out, spray it down with some disinfectant spray and some wipes, and get it all ready for our visitors here in a couple weeks. So the bunkhouse is all clean now. Sheets have been washed along with the blankets, swept and mopped, and it is all ready for our visitors. So this is Phoenix. We pulled him in for his evaluation today, and um, at first it didn't really seem like he knew much, but then he started picking things up very fast. He is probably one of the smartest horses that I've got to work with here. Um, we got him saddled up after about maybe 30 minutes of going through everything I'd normally do, and uh, I got one more thing that I want to do with him and then I'm going to have Lyric come in here and mess with him and possibly do some fake-ons and even get on him today. He just really doesn't care. But we might find something he cares about. Found it. It's the mares. He cares about the mares. <laughs> She cares about him too. Hey, we're working over here. You could talk to your ladies later. So he was only gelded about a month ago. So he's still probably got some stud behavior. There's no way of telling if he ever bred anything either, but he's real sweet to people.
See, I have no doubt in my mind that this horse is ready to at least get some weight in that stirrup and kind of go from there. It's pretty rare we get a horse here that goes through everything that fast. And uh, this young too, he's only four years old. See, those are baby teeth. I hate losing my hat. It's my security. He's been really good today, so we're just gonna give it a go. And I like to keep them in the middle so that they're not pushing me up against a wall or anything. I'd rather if they're gonna have a panic moment, they've got room to move and they're not crushing my legs. Well, I've got my foot up here. I'm just gonna kind of touch him on his butt, touch him on his other side. Let him see from either side. And what I do is I keep my toe kind of pretty out of the stirrup, just enough to where I've got some balance, to where I can put some weight up. And what I like to do is I like to get up here kind of quick to where my weight is in the center. That way I'm not putting too much weight on one side, pulling on his back. I'm gonna kind of pull him to me. I'd rather that hind end move away from me if I have to jump out. Right there's perfect. Once he stops, I'm gonna drop back down. Now I'm just gonna kind of pull his nose this way, kind of tap on that side. We'll give him a little squeeze with both, see if we can get some forward movement. Now sometimes all I'm looking for, if they're not wanting to move forward, I want them to move their feet in some way. So if they won't move forward, I'll just keep pulling that head until they take a side step. And once they step to the side, you can kind of let their nose go and they'll kind of take themselves forward. And then here, we're just gonna pull back. Ooh. And I'm gonna use my seat as well. And so I'm kind of kicking my legs forward, sitting down deep in my seat and just pulling back until he stops. And right there, I give. And I'm gonna let him check things out, but not for too long. He can sniff, he can look around. He's getting interested in y'all. So I'm gonna let him just walk on over, but he's doing really good. He doesn't seem to know what my feet mean, but he's doing really good on taking direction from my hands and that'll translate to the feet later. So how does he feel to you underneath the saddle? Like, does he feel like he's ever done this before? Um, he just seems like he's going with the motions. Um, he's not really going off of leg, but he's picking it up quick. He's smart. He's super smart. Like when I ask him to stop, I'm using my seat and he'll probably do it a lot quicker this time. Right there, it only took about a quarter of a circle instead of a, about three quarters. He seems very interested. He loves what's going on. All right, let's move along, bud. He would be a really good one for somebody to start that is wanting to get into starting horses, in my opinion. I feel like he'd be a great first project um, that just picks things up quickly as long as you're working under somebody that knows how to give proper cues so that you know that you're not starting them wrong. As long as you start them right, this one will start quick. All right, let's try that stop again. Perfect. Like, that was two seconds asking for a stop that time. This is a really good, really smart horse. Um, really excited that he's here. Um, can't wait to see who his potential adopter is. Um, from stallion to gelding and unbroke to pretty much broke in a day almost. He's one of those that you'd want to call broke in a day, even though he's definitely not, but he's one of the good ones. One of the really good ones. I can't imagine how he ended up at auction. He's a cool horse. You did awesome, buddy. All right, so that's all we're gonna do with him today. We don't want to overdo it because he's a young boy and he's done awesome today. We're very proud of him. 
Corey did some awesome work with him and then I hopped on him and we're both super proud of him and super excited about this horse being here. Not sure how he ended up here, but he's in good hands now.